Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. As you can see from the title, today's video is going to be my full review with spoilers of 30 Fire 3. I had to wait a little bit, but finally I got the chance to watch it in theaters. The film was officially released in Puerto Rico on October 31, but because I was on a trip, I had to wait a couple of days more, but I finally went to the theater to watch it and I finally have my review. Now, as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them, just to see if this was worth it or not on the description box down below. There you're going to find my spoiler-free review because I let you give you guys a few options. Giving that quick disclaimer, let's get into the video. Now, Terrifier 3 is the third film in the Terrifier series that this one follows. After surviving Art the Clown's Halloween Massacre, Sienna and her brother struggle to reveal their shadow lives. As the holiday season approaches, they try to embrace the Christmas spirit and leave the horrors of the past behind. However, just when they think they're safe, Art returns, determined to turn their holiday cheer into a new nightmare. The film is set five years after the events of the second film. It is crucial that you have previously watched Terrifier and Terrifier 2 in order for you to understand this film. And to quickly summarize it, the film opens with Art killing a family during the Christmas season at their house. And then we go back to the events of the second film after he gets killed by Sienna, his body comes back to life and he goes and finds Victoria, that is the survivor of the first film that we saw a little bit on the second. And we saw that at the end of the second, she gives birth to his head. So he goes to the asylum that she's in, he reattaches his new head, and they go together to this abandoned house. And now Victoria is being possessed by the little pale girl that we see on the second film, and she's going to become Art's partner. She goes to a bathtub in this abandoned house, and she kind of commits suicide. She takes a glass and she cuts her arms and she kind of falls down. And at first I thought she's going to kill herself, like she's committing suicide, but no. She goes into this type of hibernation mode. And the same goes to Art. He sits down on a chair and he just stays there. And he also goes into hibernation mode. Five year passes. Sienna is just coming out of a mental facility since she's going to be spending Christmas with her aunt and her family, that is the husband and her daughter Gabby, who is obsessed and she loves Sienna, although she has no idea everything that Sienna went through. And Jonathan, he is now in college. He's also trying to move along with everything that happened, but he's struggling a little bit less than Sienna. We can see that Sienna has survivor skills for what happened to her friends. She is taking medication, but she is not doing well. But unfortunately for them, both Art and Victoria are woken up and they return to life because the house that they're in, that is abandoned, is about to be demolished. So two employees go there, they found them, and they bring them back to life. Of course, they are killed. And this is when the killing rampage of Art begins. <laughs> The film has some funny moments, specifically when he meets a man dressed as Santa. We see that for the majority of the film, he has a Santa Claus costume. So we know that he got it from him. But I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of funny seeing him getting so happy of seeing Santa and the facial expressions. But eventually, Sienna realizes that Art is back. But no one really believes her and they all think that it's just her not doing well. But at last, Art finds her and he gets to the house. He kills the uncle, he kills the aunt, and at first they put uh, what it remains of a face on, on the head and it's just a skull. And at first they tell them that it's Gabby because Victoria speaks, although we know that Art the Clown doesn't say a word, Victoria speaks, so it's the one that tells her that that head belongs to Gabby. But then they show Gabby and she is still alive and in the house and they brought her to Sienna. And this is when it's revealed that the head actually belongs to Jonathan. He is killed off screen. At last, Sienna fights Art. She's able to retrieve the sword from the second film and she uses it to kill Victoria and then to try to kill Art. But the 
fluids that come out of Victoria's body, they create a hole that basically is a portal to hell. And Gabby goes to it with the sword. And she harms Art, but not enough for him to die. And the, and the film concludes with Sienna promising that she's going to find Gabby. And Art goes to a bus stop. He goes in and he creeps out the driver and a woman that is on the bus. And that is essentially it. Now, gearing into the review. This film was everything I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't expecting more or less than what it was at the end. I had so much fun. It was a cool experience to finally see a Terry Fire film in movie theaters. Things I like it and I saw improvements in terms of the edition, the cinematography, the visual aspect is essentially the same. It has that grainy effect. I really like how it looks. Also the sounds, the score, the soundtrack. I really like the original song that Ice Nine Kills did for the film that is work of art. I really like the band. So I was so excited to see that they actually did a song for this movie specifically. For me, the biggest improvement is how realistic everything looks. Of course, you can't expect much from a low budget film or although they did a lot with what they had on the first film and also on the second one. But here, the budget increase is noticeable and we all know that the majority of that went to the practical effects. And I am actually curious how much blood they use because oh my God but looks so damn realistic. That's something that I appreciate when it comes to these films. We also have an improvement in terms of the acting, specifically with Lauren Lavera, who plays Sienna. She is fantastic once again. And also David, that is who plays Art the Clown. He is amazing. He's funny here. I feel that he is funnier here than on the previous ones. He sees Santa, he is so happy at first that he looks just like a kid. And then he switches to being the little demon, the demon that he is. They also bring back some supernatural elements on the plot that were presented on the second film. So here they are brought back and even a little bit more. But for me, what is the weak link and what it still needs to be improved, and this is something that I said about the second and applies for this one, is the writing. The lines, they were a little bit cheesy. The narrative, it's chaotic. It's a little bit boring. My moments, I feel that the film shouldn't have been that long, but I understand why it's that long. It's because you need that time to fit the gory and shocking scenes. Because if you take out some of the shocking scenes, the film could have been a little bit shorter. So I understand why the film ended up being so long. But I feel that they need to create a balance with all those gory scenes and also the actual plot. Because I feel that for the first 35, almost 40 minutes, the film was dragging itself a little bit. It had a strong opening. The opening scene is brutal, but then it kind of goes a little bit downhill and then it goes up again. So it's like a constant up and down because we have a little bit of the plot, then we have gore, 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 and then we go to the plot. So I feel like they can balance a little bit more so that they can grab the audience attention just a little bit better. And I am not saying that the film is completely boring, that it's trash, that it's up, but no, I had a good time. I really like it. They have improved a lot. The only thing that they need to improve is the writing and the narrative. That's the only thing because once again, the film feels a little bit boring by moments, but I still had a good time. But that is the only thing. When it comes to the gore and the deaths, they were so creative. And it definitely feels that they wanted to go beyond what we have already seen on the first two films. Now, I was able to watch this film without seeing any spoilers online, but what I just saw was a lot of people complaining about child cruelty. So what I thought was, okay, we saw the kid on the trailer. She's going to die. That's for sure. But all the time I thought that they were going to die on screen. Every single kid that dies, because they do die, they are off screen. That we do see the aftermath. Yes, at the beginning, we see the body of one of the kids that gets killed. The girl, we don't see what happens to her, but we know that she got killed. After that, there's a scene on the mall when he's doing a Santa and he puts some explosive and he explodes a bunch of kids. But we don't really see much of it and we don't see any kid when the explosion goes. I understand that not everyone likes to see that, but at the same time, I, I was actually expecting based on the comments to see the, the kids die in there in front of the camera. I didn't see anything, so for me, that wasn't really an issue. The shower scene was another scene that was really common. <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> I felt that that was their way of 
confirming that nobody is safe here because I have seen over the years some people complaining about how it's mostly women that he kills and the violence and all of that. But, but here, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a kid, a woman, a man, mother, father. It doesn't matter who you are. You find Art the Clown, you're dead. He has no mercy and he is very creative. Once again, so creative with the killings. So that makes me excited for Terry Fire 4. It was already confirmed when Terry Fire 3 was confirmed. When the film will be coming, I'm expecting that in one, two years, pending on the production and in what they're going to be doing. I really like that the film was set during Christmas and they definitely took advantage of it. And I feel that it's good to also take out Terrifier a little bit from Halloween and bring it to another holiday. So now we have another Christmas horror film because this one is going to be part of my list of horror movies to watch during Christmas. <laughs> so at the end, I had such a fun time. The film was just what I expected and I'm going to be rewatching it, that's for sure. The film is going to be available on video on demand on November 26th. So if you didn't get the chance to watch it in theaters, you will be able to watch it at home in just a couple weeks. Now for me, this film is a 3.5 out of 5. I'm going to be giving them the 4 or even a 4.5 if they improve the writing. That is my only critique because for the rest, they improve a lot. They did a good job and I want more. Art the Clown has become an icon by this point. I don't know what the, what the plans are going to be once we have Terrify 4, but bring it on. I like these movies. And art is amazing, so I'm going to be happily waiting. But with this, I end the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below your thoughts. Which one is your favorite? If I had to rank them, I feel that the second one is just a little bit better than this. So it will be two, three, and one. I really like the first one, but I think that we can all agree that all the three of them is the one that needed the most improvement. So that will be my ranking, two, three, one. <laughs> so let me know down below your thoughts and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye. Game over.